Hello everybody. Today we're taking a look at another interesting old air gun, the Diana Model 16. The Model 16 was made from 1950 to 1985 and it was the smallest long gun that Diana sold after World War II. They also made a very similar Model 15 that only differed by having a quarter stock. Winchester sold the Diana Model 16 as the Model 416. This gun happens to be a Winchester 416. The basic design does predate World War II, and many other companies have sold very similar copies over the years. The Model 16 was made in 177 caliber only. It is 37 and 3 quarter inches long with a 12 inch smooth bore barrel, and it weighs 2 pounds 14 ounces. Just to give you an idea of the size of the Model 16, here it is next to a Daisy Red Rider. Red Rider is actually about an inch and a half longer than a Diana Model 16 is. The length of pole is only 13 inches, so it is a good fit for smaller shooters. Many people consider the Model 16 an almost toy air gun. It was also called a tin plate model. I guess that is technically accurate, but it also makes the gun interesting from a design standpoint. The only machined parts on a 416 are the nuts and bolts. All other pieces are stamped sheet metal plus a couple of pins and the mainspring. Thicker parts are made by building up several thin stack stampings. Although this was an inexpensive gun, Diana did not skip on the metal finish. The gun has a surprisingly high polish, not a webbly mirror-like finish, but better than expected, and the black oxidation is very well done. The stock, on the other hand, is about as plain as you can get, and it is completely ambidextrous. Take a look at how the barrel locks in place. The cocking arm is a folded metal part. It contains a spring-loaded mechanism that latches onto the pivot bolt when the action is closed. This design was good enough to get a patent many years ago. It is also clever to use a pivot bolt to accomplish two jobs, a barrel hinge and a barrel latch. The barrel construction is similar to several other low-priced Diana models. It consists of a smooth bore brass tube wrapped with a steel sheet for rigidity and enclosed in a larger diameter sheet metal stamping for a better appearance. The sights are also basic, a thin front post and a simple square notch for the rear. The rear sight is adjustable for elevation only and consists of narrow square notch. The problem I had with the sights is I simply can't use them unless the lighting is very good. So I made this simple peep sight that clamps to the rear sight. With this peep sight I can get a good sight picture in just about any lighting. The metal trigger is a non-adjustable two-stage unit that breaks at 2 pounds 12 ounces. It is actually pretty decent for a low-end air gun. It is mostly smooth and free from creep. It's very easy to get used to this trigger. There is no safety on this air gun, but it can be decocked to render it safe. Every Model 16 that I have shot has had lots of spring noise. The main problem is caused by too much clearance between the spring guide and the mainspring. Due to the design of the spring guide, it's impractical to make a replacement. However, you can wrap the guide with a couple layers of thin aluminum, and with proper lubrication, most of the buzz goes away. Regarding performance, the Model 16 will shoot a 7 grain hobby pellet a little bit over 400 feet per second. 8 grain pellets, it will shoot in the mid to upper 300s. It will shoot a 10.2 grain JSB pellet at 345 feet per second, and it will even shoot the 13 grain JSB monster pellets at a little bit over 300 feet per second. All this adds up to about 2.5 to 2.8 foot-pounds. Not enough for hunting, but it's just fine for shooting in the backyard. Due to the low power of the Model 16, it's also relatively quiet for a spring air gun. Cocking a Diana Model 16 only takes about 14 pounds and it's fairly smooth. Since this is a smooth bore gun, it won't win you any 10 meter matches, but with the right pellets it can be surprisingly accurate at short ranges. I get the best accuracy by holding the fore and just the head of the trigger guard and using a relatively light hold. BB should not be used in the Model 16 since they will roll right out the barrel. With peep sights and good lighting, I can even get decent groups out at 20 yards.
All Model 16s use a leather piston seal, so that does need to be oiled periodically. Also, don't bear down too hard on the barrel when you cock the gun, because it'll spread the joint here. Spare parts can still be found at several online dealers, and I'll include a link to those dealers in the description below. Diana sold many thousands of these air guns over the years, so there are a lot of them out there. They're not rare at all. The biggest problem is finding one that's not been trashed. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Diana Model 16, and I'll see you next time.